cognizant to the needs of our learners, parents, and teachers, the Department of Education provided us with powerful tools for productivity that will allow us to foster critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, communication and collaboration skills to be compassionate, responsible global citizen. Join us and discover new ideas in our series of professional development training program with the ICTS at Tech Unit and Microsoft Education Philippines. Together, we will equip our learners and empower our fellow educators for a dynamic future. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Sulong Edukalidad. Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto, kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. All right, it's a happy Monday, mga ka ELS. So good afternoon po sa ating mga live viewers who are viewing live from uh, Facebook and YouTube. So today we are going to have our session for senior high school Earth and Life Science. So we are now on quarter four, week number four, and ang ating focus for this particular session is uh, al alamin natin ang mga konsepto tungkol sa genetic engineering. Alright, so sa so mga bagong uh, viewers po natin dyan, may, uh, maybe you're a parent, you're a teacher like me, or you're a student, a grade 11 or grade 12 student taking up senior high school earth and life science. So my name is Teacher Tony or your tutor Tony for this afternoon. So samahan nyo ako sa susunod na 40 minutes ng pagtalakay at pag-appreciate sa ganda ng ating mundo at ng buhay na meron nito. Alright? So, uh, as mentioned sa ating uh, teaser kanina, no? so we are using the module provided by Region 4A Calabarzon or the Pivot module. For this session, we will be using uh, two modules, module number 24 entitled Genetic Engineering and of course, another module, module number 25 uh, entitled Benefits of Genetically Modified Organisms. All right, so are you all ready? Ayan. So I hope ready na ang inyong mga papel or lapis or ballpen or any writing materials with you. Kung meron kayong kopya ng module, mas mainam. And of course, kailangan din ng presence ng heart at saka presence. So on our discussion, uh, comment nyo lang inyong mga pabate, mga shoutout. So don't forget to mention the name of your school and location kung saan kayo nanonood right now. Alright, so I hope everyone's ready. So I hope uh, you're starting your week, right? Ayan. So actually, ayan, so we are now in the month of June and alam nyo ba, so may kling patalastas lang before our discussion, ano? So June is uh, the Environment Month here in the Philippines. So last Saturday is, oh, yun, June 5, we celebrated World Environment Day at bukas naman, June 8, we will be celebrating World Oceans Day. So back to back in mga celebrations natin because June nga is the, uh, the Philippines is celebrating the Environment Month. At ang team natin for, for this year is uh, sama-samang pagkilos, sama-samang paghilo. Ikaw at ako, tayo ang kalikasan. So napakaganda ang tema, very timely. No? So sana sama-sama nga tayong kumilos para sa sama-samang paghilom ng ating uh, planetang Earth. Alright? So yan. 
just have to just to refresh your minds, no? So last session we had uh, our session for uh, perpetuation of life. So specifically, we discussed about a sexual reproduction at saka sexual reproduction na mga uh, representative organisms sa animal kingdom. All right, for this week. Itong ating mga session objectives. Ayan. So describe, first we have to describe the process of genetic engineering. So naalala niyo pa ba yung konsepto ng genetic engineering? And of course, we have to evaluate later, later on the benefits. Ayan. Evaluate the benefits and risks of using genetically modified organisms or GMO. So I'm sure narinig nyo na yung mga GMO, GMO na yan. So re-refresh lang natin yung minds nyo. And then later on, we'll weigh the risk and the, the benefits na binibigay ng mga genetically modified organisms. I hope you're all set. So let's begin. So uh, before we uh, proceed talaga with the discussion of genetic engineering, refresh lang natin ng inyong mga uh, minds about genetics. Kasi we're talking about genetics. So ano nga ba ang genetics? Genetics is the branch of biology concerned with the study of the DNA. I'm, I hope you still remember what is DNA. Deoxyribonucleic acid, the molecules of life. Ayan. So how their DNA manifests as genes and how those genes are inherited by offspring. So sumadaling salita, so sa genetics, pinag-aaralan natin ang heredity at saka variation. So heredity means the passing of traits from the parents tapos mga magiging offspring niya in the generations to come. And variation kung paano nagkakaiba-iba yung mga, at tayo, mga living organisms because there's a variety or individuality ng mga genes natin. Alright? So that is genetics. So in the study of genetics, of course, may encounter natin yung words na chromosome, DNA, at saka genes. Ayan. So if you're going to have a uh, sample illustration for this, so we all know that, ayan, so start tayo sa chromosome. So ano nga ba yung chromosome? So na nalilito kasi iba sa chromosome, sa DNA, at sa gene. So padaliin lang natin, no? So inside the nucleus of the cell, sa dito, ang pinakita is the human cell. So we can find the chromosomes. So ano nga ba yung chromosome? The chromosomes are thread-like structures located inside the, nucle the nucleus of animal and plant cells. So each chromosome is made up of protein and a single molecule of deoxyribonucleic acid or yung tinatawag natin na DNA. So para siyang ano, uh, compare natin siya sa isang, uh, yung pinatatahin na notebook, yung yarn. Ayan. So yung, the yarn represents the chromosome. Tapos kapag inantanggal mo, pag kinuha mo yung isang PC nun, that would be your DNA or the deoxyribonucleic acid. So sinabi ko nga kanina, the DNA is the molecule of life. So ito yung pinapasa from the parents to the offspring and it contains the specific instructions that make each type of living creature unique. So particularly, yung mga, iba, iba, may meron tayo iba't ibang klase ng DNA and of course, iba't ibang klase ng genes. It carries the instructions for assembling the proteins kung ano yung magpamanifest sa ating phenotype. So mamaya, I recall natin din yung terms na genotype at saka phenotype. So yun na. So we have the chromosomes. Ayan. So inside the chromosomes, uh, the thread-like structures, ayan, makikita natin ang DNA, the double helix structure. Ayan. So it's a nucleotide. And of course, yung bawat segment or bawat particular uh, portion ng DNA uh, ayun, is responsible for a particular trait. Ang, tinata ang tawag doon ay genes. Okay? So chromosome, DNA, and then yung segment or bawat particular dis or distinct portion ng uh, DNA is what we call the genes. Alright? So the genes, uh, these are the coded instructions for everything that must happen in the body. So how we function and how we look. So for, say for example, uh, there's a gene for the, the eyes. Anong kulay ng eyes natin? Black ba yan? Brown or blue? So there's a particular gene din sa katawan natin na magdidictate kung ano magiging uh, in, uh, appearance nating hair. Say for example, so do you have a straight hair, uh, curly hair, or wavy hair like me? Ayan. So may mga particular genes. So may genes din tayo sa, for height. Diba? So may mga ganun. Alright? So genes will dictate the particular phenotype. Alright? So, chromosomes, DNA, and then the DNA contains specific portions called the genes. I hope uh, naintindihan yung differences between the three terms. Alright? We also be using the terms uh, genotype and phenotype. So, madali lang naman to. So, pag genotype, uh, we'll be dealing with uh, the genetic makeup of the individual. So, the DNA siya sa genes on the molecular level. Pag phenotype naman, 
ito yung minamanifest ng anong klaseng genes meron ng isang individual. Kumbaga, yung morphology niya or yung physical appearance. So in our slide, phenotypes are the set of observable characteristics of an individual resulting from the interaction of its genotype with the environment. So genotype, the genes, phenotype is the physical appearance or the uh, morphology of the organism. Ayan, so good afternoon sa ating unang uh, commentator. Yes, commentator. Parang nag nanonood ito dati. So heavenly heart, tanghian. Ayan, good afternoon sa inyo. Taga saan ka ba? Mention mo naman. And I hope sa mga nanonood po, uh, please like and share our session para at least uh, ma-reach out din natin yung mga uh, iba pa nating mga viewers, especially our senior high school learners. So, ano nga ba yung genetic engineering? So, this one in our diagram or representation. So, in the middle, we have the DNA, ayan, yung double helix structure niya. And we have here a geneticist or perhaps a molecular biologist. And as you can see, ginalaw, ginagalaw na yung bawat uh, mga pairs or mga particular genes dun sa DNA. So, what is genetic engineering ba? So, genetic engineering is the artificial manipulation. So, ibig sabihin, ginagalaw yan. Modification, binabago, and recombination of DNA. So, mamaya kasi, uh, one technique sa genetic engineering is nagkumukuha ng gene sa particular organism tapos ini-insert sa isa pang organism. So, ganun yung magic or yung process ng genetic engineering. So, or other nucleic acid molecules in order to, ang goal kasi is to modify an organism or population of organisms. So, so sa biology kasi, meron tayong mga risk nga at saka benefits ng genetic engineering. So, I hope in our session, ma-highlight yung, ano, yung benefits, ano, ma-highlight yung benefits ng uh, different genetic engineering techniques. Alright? So, that is the definition of genetic engineering. Ayan. So, isa isay na natin yung mga i-discuss natin na ge different genetic engineering techniques. So, we have under artificial selection, meron tayong tatlo. We have selective breeding, hybridization, at saka inbreeding. So, i-discuss natin yan isa-isa later on. We also have the techniques called cloning. Ayan, yung mga clones. Uh, mentioned ko na yung last sessions, di ba? Cloning. We also have gene splicing. Ayan, ini splice Kinakat ang genes. Gel electrophoresis. Ano kaya yung gel electrophoresis na yan? At saka yung very common or very uh, famous na technique, we have the recombinant DNA technology that is being used in different uh, areas or in different fields in sciences. Alright? So those are the techniques. Isa-isa na natin. Ayan. So we have the first technique called selective breeding. So from the word itself, you select a particular trait. Siyempre yung trait na yun ay dapat desirable, ibig sabihin magandang klase ng trait, and you breed. So, pinag-breed mo yung particular organisms. Alright? Uh, one of the best examples sa animal kingdom is ayan, uh, yung dogs. We have different kinds of dogs. Ako kasi, I'm not so particular with the, or I'm not familiar with the different breeds of dogs, no? Ang alam ko lang yung aspin, <laughs> yung common sa Pilipinas. Ayan. Although, marami tayong mga fur parents, di ba? Hello sa mga fur parents natin dyan. We have different, they have different kinds or uh, different breeds ng mga dogs, di ba? So, paano nga ba nagkaroon ng mga different breeds ng dogs? So, yan ay produkto ng tinatawag natin na selective breeding. Uh, breeding is also known as artificial selection. This is a process used by humans to develop new organisms with desirable characteristics. So yung mga dogs, diba, uh, particularly uh, the year after the intelligence, the size, minsan, or depende sa location, kung ano yung magiging tulong niya for, for his or her uh, magiging ano, uh, companion or amo. Alright? So ang ginagawa ng mga breeders, they select two parents that have beneficial phenotypic traits, yung phenotype, yung appearance, to reproduce. And then they will yield or they reproduce offspring with those desired traits. Ayan. So tingnan lang natin, trace lang natin yung history, no? Ayan, so sinasabing uh, as early as 14,000, at least 14,000 years ago, nag, nag-breed na ng, 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 ng dogs, yung mga dog breeders. And uh, ayun nga, ang sabi, mga dogs ay nanggaling sa, or the dogs that we know right now, evolved from the wild gray wolf or the canis lupus. And because of the different selective breeding techniques na ginawa ng mga tao all around the world. So we have Europe, America, China, India. So here are some of the ano lang, no, key uh, locations. They have, they have successfully breed different types of or the different breeds of dogs. 
Ang target syempre dyan is ma-highlight yung size nila. Kailangan ba malaki, medium size, or maliliit, mga cute for pets, di ba? Or your intelligence for certain tasks. Although we know that dogs are really intelligent animals. And they are great companions for hunting, pag-shepherd ng mga other animals. Ayan. So yun yung uh, one of the best examples of selective breeding in animals. So sa uh, plants naman, meron din tayo. Sinong kumakain dito ng, ayan, broccoli. Ayan. <laughs> one of my favorites. Very rich in uh, protein and other vitamins and minerals. So broccoli, did you know that broccoli is man-made? Technically, wala talagang broccoli, no? It's man-made. So, paano nangyari yun? Dahil sa selective breeding din ng so mga plants. It was made over 2,000 years ago by farmers uh, selectively breeding different types of cabbage or the wild cabbage. So, ito yun. Tignan natin yung magkakamag-anak. So, na-mention natin si broccoli. Ayan, yung broccoli, yung cabbage, the turnips, the kale. Ayan, sarap yun sa salad. We have the cauliflower and the kohlrabi. I'm not familiar with that. Pero I'm sure kinakain din yan or pinapropagate din yan, pinaparami sa ibang areas ng mundo. Yan. So, anong ginawa ng mga breeders, the farmers? By isolating wild cabbage or the wild mustard with specific characteristics, they were able to create a variety of vegetables. So, from a single type of or a variety of vegetable, they were able to produce around six. So, ganun ka important, no? Kung imagine kung hindi yan na, na ginawa ng mga early farmers. So, wala, hindi natin may enjoy kung yung broccoli, yung cabbage, and mga favorite natin, cauliflower sa ating chaksuy or sa any vegetable dish or uh, sa mga mahilig dyan sa salads, di ba? So, that is a product of selective breeding. We also have another staple food, yan, sa bukod sa rice dito sa Pilipinas. Sa mga agricultural countries, one of the staple food is corn or the maize. Alam niyo ba na ang corn ay nanggaling sa isang uh, smaller plant na nagproduce ng kernels called the theocinte. The theocinte, ayan. Ayan. So, paano nangyari yun? It was also selectively bred. Ayan. So, from uh, smaller kernels, uh, ayan, pinalaki siya ng pinalaki. Kinuha yung mga species or varieties that they can produce bigger kernels. So, ang sabi dito sa facts natin, scientists believe that early Mexican farmers selected only the largest and the tastiest. So, remember, ah, hindi lang sa, sa, sa size ng kernel, pati sa lasa din, of course, it will, it will also matter. The, sa, the tastiest kernels of the teosinte for planting, rejecting the pernier or the smaller kernels. This process allowed the Mexicans, so mga Mexicans pala, or sa Mexico pala nag-start, no, to develop corn very quickly, so it, and then the rest is history. And actually, we have different varieties na rin ng horns, di ba? We have the sweet corn, the Japanese corn, yung corn na puti, yung mga native na corns natin sa Central Luzon, di ba? Ayan. So that is also a product of selective breeding. Ayan. Ayan. So we have selective breeding first. Okay? So we'll pre proceeding with the second uh, genetic engineering technique called hybridization. So keyword naman dito, dito is hybrid. So pag sinabi kasi nating hybrid, it's a product of ano, uh, two individuals with unlike characteristics. Okay, ibang characteristics that they are crossed, they are breed uh, to produce the best in both organisms. Ma-highlight syempre yung magandang characteristics or phenotypic uh, structure niya. So one great example for hybridization or yung hybrid is yung ginawa ng isang American plant breeder and horticulturist so nag-aalaga, nagpapropagate ng mga plants na si Luther Burbank. So isa siyang American. So nagkaroon kasi na yung famine, uh, nag-i-infest nag kasi or na-infect na, na, na yung mga potatoes during her, his time. If you would ano, uh, recall, baka nakapag talok or nakapagbalat na kayo ng potatoes before, parang si Princess Sarah. <laughs> Minsan, may mga patatas tayo na tatalupan na pero siya mga black na ano, di ba? So that's actually infected by a certain type of fungus. Hindi natin, ayaw natin ng ganun, okay? So ang ginawa ni Luther Burbank during the time na sobrang uh, lumaganap yung uh, infections sa mga potatoes, what he did was he crossed a disease-resistant plant. So pag sinabi natin yung disease-resistant, a plant or an organism that can uh, resist any type of disease. Alright? Tapos kinaros na yon sa isa pang type ng potato na nakakapag-produce ng maramihan. So yung mga produce niya or yung yields niya ay malalaki, mga malalaking kinds of potatoes. Ayan. So na-produce ang ating mga Burbank potatoes. Ayan. So thanks to Luther Burbank, 
Ayan. So, na-survive nila yung famine na yun or yung infestation ng mga fungus sa potatoes. So, that's one example of hybridization in uh, plants. Let us now proceed naman with, ayan, is an example of hybrid naman sa mga animals. I'm sure you, you have heard of the word liger. Ayan. So, liger ito. Picture na ito kasi kinuha ko sa sa website ng National Geographic. So, we have here a liger. Ang name niya is, ito ay yung mother na liger. A liger, Zita, walks with her month-old cub at Russia's, uh, Russia's Novosibirsk Zoo. And ligers are the offspring of a female tiger, kinagross ang female tiger at saka male lion. Alright? So, ayan. So, we have here a, a liger, a hybrid. Other hybrids din, meron tayo na tayo na tigon naman. So, it's a product of a female lion and a male tiger na pinag-breed or pinag-cross. We also have a leopon, a combination naman ng lion at saka leopard, at saka isa pa, jagulep. Jagulep is a combination of jaguar and leopard. So, bakit sila pwedeng i-breed? Kasi they are from a common ancestor. So, they are a family of cats. So, their genes can be crossed. Ayan. So, liger, tigon, leopon, at saka jagonet. So, examples of hybrids and animals. And of course, hindi tayo pa uhuli sa Pilipinas. Medyo, late, uh, medyo matagal nga lang to, 1962. Ayan. So, a zebronchi, a rare animal that is half zebra. So, half zebra naman, saka half donkey. So, related sila, no, yung mga kabayo na yan. It was first bred in Manila Zoo. Ayan. So, saan mag-open na yung Manila Zoo? Para madala ko ni anak ko. <laughs> Manila Zoo in 1962 and they named her Lolita. So Lolita, the zebronchi sa Manila Zoo. It was bred in 1962. Ayan. So a little trivia for all of you. So those are the hybrids. And lastly, for artificial selection, we have an in a technique called inbreeding wherein organisms that are genetically similar are bred to maintain desired traits. So, ang nahanap natin na research dito at saka sa module, found on module number 20, 25, ayan. So, we have what we call the Holstein Dairy Cattle. So, ang cattle kasi, as you all know, they are, uh, we rely on cattle or cows for their meat at saka milk. Ayan, so very, ano rin yan, staple sa mga, sa, sa mga families natin, di ba? So, for example, in breeding Holstein, dairy cattle has led to increase of milk production and target, of course, uh, makapag-produce ng mas maraming milk. Kasi nga, uh, syempre, in terms of population, mas dumadami ang tao. So, kailangan increase din yung production, di ba? So, for food security purposes. Pero, meron siyang uh, disadvantage. The cows are more difficult to to breed. Once they were... Uh, Uh, when, once they went the process of inbreeding. So yung mga next generation, may, may hirap, mas nahihirapan na rin mag, mag-breed. Alright? So that's one of the best examples of inbreeding. So once again, under artificial selection, we have uh, inbreeding, selective breeding, at saka hybridization. Alright? Let us now proceed to um, to the uh, more technical na, ter- na technical na mga, te- uh, technical na mga techniques, mas elaborate na techniques because they, uh, they are... Uh, gumagamit na ng mga laboratory equipment, mas high-end na mga tools para map- makapag-produce ng mga organisms. Yeah, so the first one, the first one is called cloning. Cloning is a technique that scientists use to make the exact genetic copies of living things. So general kasi in terma, sa biology, yung clone is an exact copy of the parent organism. Yeah, so we're in the genes, the cells, or the tissues, and even the whole animals can all be cloned. And of course, ang um, pinaka-best example niyan is no 1996, ayan, si Dolly, the first clone ship, and then eventually, uh, tinaray nila kung makakapag-produce siya ng offspring, and successfully, she was able to give birth to to her, ano man tawag sa baby na, na she, the lamb, ayan, lamb, the bunny, ayan. So successful ang cloning procedures. Naging instant celebrity yan si Dolly. We also have uh, other clone animals. So I'll be showing uh, sa mga series ng uh, slides natin later. Makita niyo mga clone animals. Like here in Japan, so we have Noto and Kaga. They're, these are the cows duplicated several times. So from dalawa naging mas marami pa. Uh, to produce more milk at saka meat. But, uh, that was 1998 in Japan. We also have other examples right here. Ayan, mga cute na pigs. 
piglets were cloned. Five piglets named Millie, Alexis, Krista, Dorcom, and Carol were cloned by a company wanting to reproduce. And have you heard of the news? Na yung organs kasi na pwede natin may clone, derived from the cloned pigs, can be transplanted to humans. Just like uh, yung mga important organs natin na kailangan for transplantation, like liver at saka heart. Ayan. So they are trying to to clone these pigs para makapag-produce ng mga human organs for transplantation. That was, ayan, during 2000s. We also have, ayan, a cute na cute na monkey, a restless monkey named Tetra. Uh, it's being cloned by scientists for laboratory experiments naman during the 2000s then. We also have another example. Ayan. <laughs> Ang cute na cute na si CC or si Carbon Copy. It was cloned by a company wanting to go into business naman. Oh, business venture for, ano to naman, for reproducing pets during 2001. So tuloy-tuloy na yung, ano, no, yung cloning procedures natin. Siyempre, kung may pusa, may, may aso. <laughs> Snappy the dog was cloned by South Korean scientists to study, ito naman, for medical purposes. The, the, uh, Snappy was uh, cloned to study human diseases. Ayan. It happened 2005 in South Korea. Ayan. So those are some examples of cloning in animals. Ayan. So that's that second technique, no? So we have the first technique, so we have uh, cloning. The next technique is what we call the gene splicing. Pag splice. Pag sinabi natin pag splice, to cut, tapos remove natin on a particular area. So when we say gene splicing, as our diagram suggests, so we have here a uh, double helix structure na DNA, tapos yung gene non particular segment, kinot, tapos inilagay sa isa pang uh, Isa bang portion naman ng uh, DNA, alright? So it's gene splicing is the process of chemically cutting DNA of one organism and it, and it will be put into another organism using restriction enzymes. So mamaya discuss natin yung restriction enzymes. So yung nagka-cut ng particular uh, segment ng uh, genes. Ayan. So para smooth lang ang pag-cut tapos pag-replace ng mga particular gene segments natin. Okay, so because of gene splicing, scientists can add and tag sequence to track and study gene products in an organism on the molecular level. It can also create new gene sequences para makapag-create ng panibagong uh, variety of proteins with multiple or entirely new functions. So ginagamit yan sa mga researches at saka sa pag-develop sa pag ng mga panibagong genetically modified organisms. The next technique is what we call gel electrophoresis. Ayan. So as you can see, ayan, meron tayong device dyan. So nakasaksak. So meron siyang certain amount of electricity para ma-charge. Ayan. So it's a laboratory method used to separate mixtures of DNA, RNA, or proteins according to molecular size and charge. So imagine that on that molecular level or na microscopic level na nahihimay ng mga uh, geneticists natin, ng mga scientists, yung DNA, RNA, at mga proteins. So imagine, ang iba't ibang klase kasi ng proteins ang meron tayo sa katawan. So imagine the, the, this innovation called gel, electro, gel electrophoresis. So paano nga ba nag-work yan? So we have another diagram here. So we have the negative and the positive charge, of course. It involves electricity. Tapos meron tayo dyan plate. Ayan, tapos padadaanan ng certain amount of electricity, uh, the, the DNA will move. Ayan, A, C, G, T, uh, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. And it, and it will produce a certain uh, parang pro, uh, photo. Ayan. Ayan, so we have here a gel, a garagos gel placed in this buffer filled box, yung kanina sa diagram natin. This being powered, positive siya negative terminal. And then, ang goal is ma ma mapamagrate, mapamove yung DNA towards the camera para makapag-produce ng clearer picture at saka clearer, uh, uh, tawag dito, separation ng mga constituent parts ng DNA and other uh, biomolecules, yan, protein nga yung tinatawag, sinabi ni teacher kanina. Alright? So, gel electrophoresis has several uh, uses. Ayan, so... First is to separate DNA fragments for DNA fingerprinting to investigate crime scenes. So, ginagamit yan sa mga pag-investigate ng mga crimes to identify kung kaninong mga uh, fingerprints yon or kung anumang uh, ebidensya, di ba? Next is to analyze results of polymerase chain reaction. 
to analyze genes associated with particular illness, pag-identify ng mga or pag-aaral ng mga different illnesses natin, pag-profiling ng DNA para ma- ma-identify yung mga ancestors niyan sa evolution naman ito ginagamit at saka sa taxonomy. It also being used in paternity testing using DNA fingerprinting so para malaman di ba, kung sino ang tatay. Ayan. In the study of structural and karina, uh, function of proteins, pag-analyze ng antibiotic resistance ng organism, and of course, in the study of evolutionary relationships by analyzing genetic similarity among populations or species. So, hindi lang sa research, it's also being used in taxonomy and in the study of evolution. Ayan. And then finally, we have the recombinant DNA technology. So, ano nga ba yung recombinant DNA technology? Recombine. Ayan. So, yung mga key concepts natin na dapat tandaan for this, This is the joining together of DNA molecules from two different species. This is used to remove and insert genetic sequences from and into other sequences of other organisms. And then later on, sa mga diagrams natin, uh, mar- marinig nyo yung mga terms na restriction enzymes, vectors, at saka host organisms. And it's being used sa production ng gamot, mga health supplements, cosmetic products. Of course, we have chemicals and other products na very beneficial sa ating mga tao. Okay, let's begin. So just to give you a preview, ayan, so we have here a plasmid. So plasmids are produced by bacteria. So commonly, yung mga bacteria kasi yung ginagamit as vectors no, para ma- 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 maparami ang particular, uh, let's say for example, a hormone or an enzyme. So ang ginagawa yan sa plasmid, we have restriction enzymes. And yung foreign DNA na gusto nating paramihin, ayan. So restriction enzymes are the ones who will cut a specific segment of the DNA. Ayan, tapos i-insert. And the ligase en- enzyme ang magsisil naman. And then this, yung recombinant DNA na na-produce, ang mapaparami. I-insert yan sa bacteria para paramihin. Okay. Ayan, plasmids are the vector. So when we say vector, it is a DNA sequence that can transport. So pwede siya natin i-transport, i-transfer from one cell into another para makapag-replicate siya para maparami. So yung sinasabi naman nating restriction enzyme, commonly sa mga reference books or sa internet sources, mababasa ninyo e core 1 Okay? Or the restriction enzyme na nagkikleave or nagkakot ng specific DNA na pwede nating tanggalin or i-remove. Tapos papalitan natin ng gusto nating DNA na paramihin. Okay? Uh, an example here is yung pag-introduce ng human growth hormone sa plasmid ng bacterial chromosome. Ayan. So the same process lang din. Ayan. It uses the restriction enzyme and plasmid, of course, as the vector. Tapos yung pinaka-host organism is the bacterial cell na magpaparami ng growth hormone. Okay? Based on my research, yung growth hormone na ito is hindi yung growth hormone na inisip natin ng papatangkan. Yung growth hormone na ito ay ginagamit sa, sa mga ano, sa mga baka or sa mga cattle para ang target na, na trait dito is yung trait na makapagpaparami ng production ng, ng milk. Alright? So that's the technique called the, D, the recombinant DNA technology. Ayan, so recall lang natin yung mga techniques that we have discussed. Under artificial selection, we have selective breeding, hybridization, at saka inbreeding. We also discuss about cloning, gene splicing. So cloning, you are providing the exact copy, di ba? Kagawa ka na isang copy. Gene splicing, magka-cut, tapos transfer sa another segment ng DNA or ng gene. We also have gel electrophoresis para pag-analyze ng DNA. And then recombinant DNA technology. Okay, so we are now ready to answer Match Me on Module 24, page 11 to 12. So your choices are letter A, artificial selection, B, selective breeding, C, hybridization, D, inbreeding, E, cloning, so F, gene splicing, and G, gel electrophoresis. So technically, yung mga techniques na tiniscuss natin. So number one, animals with desired characteristics are mated to produce offspring with those desired traits. Anong tawag dito? Ang example nito is in Dutch Hunt. Dachshund is a kind of uh, dog. Dachshund were once bred to hunt badgers and other burrowing animals. Yung Dachshund, ganyan. Maliit, ma short na dog, tas pahaba siya. So, ang goal niya is para makapag-hunt daw ng mga badgers at saka ng iba pang burrowing animals sa soil. So, what technique is that? Okay. So, the correct answer is B, selective breeding. 
Number two, creating an organism that is an exact genetic, genetic copy of another. They will have the same exact DNA as the parent. Of course, exact copy, we have the, ayan, so cloning. Number three, DNA is cut, ayan, yun yung clue natin na, clue word natin. DNA is, DNA is cut out of one organism and then put into another organism. A trait will be transferred from one organism to another. That is your F, gene splicing. All right, may sumasagot. Thanks to, ayan, Jeremiah Capule Gallardo. Hello. I think you answered correctly sa number two, letter E, and then letter F. Ayan, good job. Jeremiah Capule Gallardo. Lagay mo naman kung anong school ka para ma-acknowledge ma natin. Okay? Let's try. Others, ha? you can also uh, interact with me. Answer kayo sa comment box. Huwag kayong mahiyang sumagot. We are now number four. Remember kanina yung sa Burbank potato created by Luther Burbank. So he crossed a disease-resistant plant with one that had a large food-producing capacity. That is your... Hybridization. So a hybrid example natin yan sa plants. Number five, a technique used to compare DNA from two or more organisms. That is your gel electrophoresis. Diba? Kino-compare yung DNA, RNA, at saka yung mga protein structures natin. Ayan, Jeremiah Capuli Gallardo, biotechnology teacher here po from Bataan National High School. Lessons po namin yan. Hello po sir, good afternoon po. So I hope makatulong po itong session natin sa inyong mga sudyante. Alright. We also have number six. Breeding of organisms that are genetically similar to maintain desired traits. Yung example natin dito kanina is yung cow, yung cattle. It keeps each breed unique from others. The correct answer would be inbreeding. So inaano ko na, so pina-fast forward ko na medyo yung ano, exercises natin to help you out and to maximize yung time natin. Kasi meron pa tayo yung didiscuss. Alright, so here now is the discussion about the benefits of and genetic engineering or as mentioned by Sir Gallardo, so it's a component of biotechnology where you combine or apply the concept of biology para makapag-produce ng mga uh, genetically modified organisms for the benefit of humanity. Okay, so pag sinabi natin sin Jim, o oh, iniisip ng mga tao is yung mga, they are common with uh, genetically modified organisms na particularly sa mga crops or sa food. So, meron tayong dyan rice, of course, yeast, papaya, we have canola oil, and other food products, yan, tomato, corn, ayan. And in the Philippines and other Southeast Asian countries, if I don't know if you're familiar, we have what we call golden rice. It's a genetically modified rice. So, yellow siya kasi meron siyang component ng vitamin A. And based kasi sa studies, vitamin A affects or greatly affects yung mga children natin dito sa Southeast Asia, so sa Philippines nga. So medyo kinokontra lang siya ng mga different organizations. But based on my research, just recently, 2019, na-approved na siya for staple, uh, for consumption. So based on studies, it's just like the normal rice incorporated with vitamin A. Okay, so that is your golden rice. Ayan, for ano naman, so para makapagbigay pa ako ng other examples ng GMO, ginamit ko yung module number 25, page 11, the exercises about transgenic or genetically modified organisms. So we will be having a guessing game. Sana may mag-comment. <laughs> Ayan, alright. So magpapakita lang ako ng description tsaka picture just like this. Then hulaan nyo kung ano yung tawag. Okay? First example, is an apple that tastes like grapes. Tingin na ba kayo ng ganyan? So meron yan sa US kasi. I haven't tasted one. So, ang tawag dyan ay grapple. Crunches like an apple, but tastes like a grape. Yan, grapple. The second example is, a type of cow that produces milk that contain human protein and found to be more nutritionally balanced. So, it's a type of cow called the transgenic cow. So, yung mga sumasagot na modules ha. So, number one, grapple. Ang tawag natin sa number two is your transgenic cow. Number three is a type of cabbage, ito ha, type of cabbage that is injected with scorpion venom aimed to kill caterpillars. But take note ha, yung, of course, yung, uh, we mod they modified the venom the, sa, sa scorpion. Ang target niya, to kill the caterpillars, not the consumers, not the human consumers, okay? So ang tawag dyan ay venomous cabbage, okay? That's number three. Number four naman, they can, uh, can produce virus proteins against hepatitis and cholera. Ayan, sa banana. Okay, it's called the banana vaccine. 
So they're aiming or studying to uh, to propagate bananas that can contain or they can produce uh, virus proteins against hepatitis and cholera. So sa dalawa sa mga uh, common na diseases uh, all throughout the world, di ba? Pero hindi siya yung technically na ano ah, uh, yung banana talaga na ganyan, kakainin mo siyang ganyan. It's actually, ipaprocessed pa siya para maging oral vaccine siya. Para siyang yung kinakain ng mga babies na banana, imamash. Ayan, so ipaprocessed pa siya para makonsider siya or mag-work siya sa katawan pag kinain as a vaccine. Hindi siya yung totally na yung saging, you will, you will eat it, may vaccinated. You are vaccinated already. So, it will underwent a process pa. So, banana, bakit banana yung sabi sa studies? So, based on my research, so, madali lang kasi mag-reproduce ang banana. It's uh, one of the staple food din sa, sa different parts of the world. Okay? So, that is our banana vaccine, number four. Number five, Insulin gene is injected to this bacteria. So, bacteria, ano klaseng bacteria kaya yan? To produce the hormone insulin. Ayan, para sa mga diabetic. Ayan, so, diabetes is one of the critical illness na mayroon sa buong mundo, di ba? So, we have, or they are utilizing the Escherichia coli or the E. coli bacteria to produce the hormone insulin. Number six, ayan, would you imagine this? Would you believe that this actually exists? Uh, spider... Yeah, silk, yung galing sa, yung silk na galing sa spider. Ayan, incorporated sa genes ng, uh, ng goat. Ayan, spider enhanced milk that can produce silk stronger than steel. Ayan, so they find other means para makapag-produce pa ng silk. Kasi ang silk, uh, silk moth lang ata yung isa sa mga source ng, ng silk, di ba? So they tried to investigate ano mangyayari kapag in-incorporate mo yung genes ng mga silk spider sa goat. Ayan, so you have the product called the spider goat, alright? Ayan, tama, spider goat, sir. Thank you so much. Ayan, number seven, a cat that produces a fluorescent protein in its fur. Ayan, so basically, ginagamit to for advanced research. Ang tawag natin dyan is the luminous cat. And finally, na-mention ko na to kanina, a hybrid of the tiger and the lion that will end our activity for module 25, page 11, of course, we have the liker. Ayan. So we're done with those with, with that activity. We are now ready to discuss the different benefits of genetic engineering. Ayan. So ano nga ba yung mga benefits? So kanina sa, end, uh, sa beginning ng session natin, sabi ko, sana ma-highlight yung benefits. Kasi naniniwala ko na yung science, when applied or when, uh, yun, when applied or technology applied, na kapag maganda intention mo for the benefit of humanity, syempre, dapat suportahan yung mga ganyang klase ng studies. Alright? So, one of the benefits of genetic engineering, of course, is the improvement of the quality and crop yield. So, we have several crops na products na actually ng GMO. Uh, ang goal naman kasi, let's say, for example, the tomato. Madaling mabulo kasi ang tomato, di ba? So because of genetic engineering, we can produce tomatoes that are large, mas malaki, so for food security purposes. And number two, hindi sila madaling mag magspoil or yung shelf life nila matagal. Okay? So that's one benefit. The second is, because of genetic engineering, we are, we are able to produce drugs to treat different kinds of diseases. And not only to treat, to also diagnose different diseases like HIV, tuberculosis, uh, hepatitis, allergies. And meron din tayong tinatawag na konsepto, the term is gene therapy. So gumagamit ng healthy genes na transfer sa, na, sa gene ng taong may sakit para to cure uh, different diseases or na, para ma-improve nga lang, ma-improve. Uh, although, not, although not to cure, but to improve. Kumaga, nasa clinical trials pa lang kasi. Just like, uh, based on my research, we have cancer, ayan, hemophilia, yung hindi nagkaklat yung uh, blood, di ba? And many others. Ayan, so that's the second uh, benefit of genetic engineering, production of drugs to treat diseases. We also have, ayan, have you heard of uh, biofertilizers and biopesticides? Kasi tayo mga tao, di ba? Uh, sa mga plantito, tsaka plantita, or mga nasa farming industries, we incorporate or we add fertilizers or pesticides, pwedeng natural yan or chemically produced. But because of genetic engineering, we are, we are using microorganisms that will serve as natural source of pesticides. So imagine that. 
So may mga bacteria pala na ginagamit or ina-engineer to produce alilophatic genes that will serve as natural pesticides. For fertilizers naman, uh, GMOs are grown symbiotically with plants. Say for example, di ba, nitrogen is very important sa mga halaman. Ayan. So nitrogen it exists, so nitrogen cycle, no, mayroon, kailangan ng nitrogen fixing bacteria. But because of genetic engineering techniques, say for example sa mga soybeans, they were able to produce, yung plants na yun, they were able to produce their own usable form of nitrogen. So hindi naasa talaga sa, oh yes, we have the natural nitrogen cycle, but because of genetic engineering, uh, makaka-incorporate na symbiotically na nitrogen as natural fertilizer. So, di ba? Very advantageous. And then finally, uh, have you heard of bioremediation? Ayan. Para naman to solve uh, environmental problems. Ayan. So, bioremediation, to give you an overview or an idea, ayan, we have here a diagram. So, ang ginagawa natin for bioremediation, it uses natural and recombinant mic microorganisms to break down toxic and hazardous substances in the environment. So, class, naturally, meron tayong syempre, of course, bacteria and other microorganisms that naturally break down yung mga basura, mga substances na hindi natin kailangan para ma-recycle siya in nature. But because of this technique called bioremediation, ginagamit or mas na-enhance pa yung mga microorganisms na to in terms of uh, speed at saka efficacy sa pag-degrade nila ng waste materials. And also, have you heard of bacteria? So may nakapag-develop na rin or nakapag-engineer ng mga bacteria that is called the oil-eating bacteria. So ito yung ginagamit naman pag may oil spills, di ba? Nagkaroon ng mga leaks sa mga mga ano natin, mga planta natin, di ba? So yun, imagine, very small organisms but very huge help sa ating environment. So biofertilizer, biopesticide, at saka bioremediation. So Sir Galliard, yeah, the flavor savor tomato, ayan, sa sa mga unang uh, genetically modified organism. Thank you for sharing, sir. Ayan. So for our last test this afternoon, all we have to do is Classify lang natin kung benefit or risk. So B for benefit and then R for risk is found on module 25, page 14 of your module. Ayan. So number one, obviously crops like potato, tomato, soybean, and rice are currently being genetically engineered to obtain new strains with better nutritional qualities and increased yield. So para malabanan yung uh, micro deficiency, malnutrition, tsaka uh, magkaroon ng food security. So, ginagamit natin yan. Of course, that's a benefit. One is B. Number two, genetic engineering in food can be used to produce totally the same or identical substances such as proteins and other food nutrients. So, in terms of nutrients na naman, so we have B. Uh, we have benefit, of course. Number three, Positive genetic engineering deals with enhancing the positive traits. May clue ka na, dami positive. <laughs> positive traits in an individual like increasing longevity or human capacity while negative genetic engineering deals with suppression of negative traits in human beings like certain genetic diseases. So pinapabagal or pinapa-enhance pa ang quality ng life natin. So that's of course a benefit. Number four. Kaya kumabol ha sa comment section natin. Number four, genetic engineering in food involves the alteration of genes in crops. That's a risk. Kasi naminomodify natin yung natural, yun nga, yung sinasabi, mamamodify natin yung natural na, uh, yung takbo ng ecosystem. Alright? So that's a risk. Hindi natin may iwasan, well, but that's one factor that we should consider. Okay? Number five, while increasing the immunity to diseases and plants, the resistance genes may get transferred to harmful pathogens. Okay, so that's another risk. Number six, genetic uh, a risk. So negatively, na affect to hanya ang diversity na organisms natin in the wild. And number seven, the genetic modification of foods can be used to increase their medicinal value. That's making edible vaccines available. Yung kanina, di ba? Yung sa banana vaccine. That's a benefit. Okay? So those are the answers for module 25, page 14. So I hope na-enlighten kayo sa konsepto ng genetic engineering at mas na-highlight, of course, yung benefits na technique na ito para ma-improve yung quality ng life na ating mga tao. And of course, 
uh, as scientists kayo, mga learners natin, as future geneticists, as future molecular biologists, or other scientists in the field. So sana uh, mas lamang yung benefits, di ba, na sa future innovations na gagawin ninyo. Alright? So consider natin yung ano, the benefits rather than, the, of course, we have to consider the, the risk factors. We have to balance it out. Okay? Ayan, so for hash for our hashtag be inspired hashtag be blessed uh, segment so yung mga last segment natin during our session according to Darren Hardy so I, I and I quote DNA has nothing to do with success sabi niya so kahit kahit ano pang ganda ng DNA mo matalino ka you are you have pleasing personality and all yeah turn your genes into overalls and get to work so, ibig sabihin lang dyan ni Darren Hardy, you have to maximize kung ano yung binigay sa'yo ni God, di ba? Binigyan ka lang ng talino, binigyan ka ng specific trait, magandang trait, gamitin mo yan para ma-bless mo yung sarili mo, yung family mo, at syempre, para makatulong ka sa pag-unlad ng ating bansa in the future. Alright? So, that would be all for our session this quarter two, uh, quarter four, week number four of Senior High School Earth and Life Science. You can communicate me by uh, email, Facebook. You can check my weekly uh, account and my YouTube uh, account, Mr. Voice Educator PH. I hope uh, you had fun sa ating 40 minutes plus <laughs> na discussion. Ayan. Thank you very much. See you again next week for our session, Senior High School Earth and Life Science. This has been Sir Tony. Ingat po tayo palagi and God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you so much po. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating itulay free online tutorial session sa English. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating itulay tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!